Our guest today is Noam Lemelstrik Latar, Dean of the Sami Ofer School of Communication at the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya, Israel. We are going to speak to him about whether robot journalists will replace human ones. Noam, thank you so much for speaking with us today. It's a pleasure to be here again with you, Moko. Uh, what a provocative topic uh, you have written about uh, in your paper. What what exactly is robot journalism? Well, uh, you know that uh, computers have helped journalists uh, to write story, to write to find facts since the since the middle of last century. There was what we call data mining and analytics, data analytics, which helped journalists to find, find the facts and do investigative journalism. Uh, so this is not new. What is now uh, developing is that there are new programs, artificial intelligence programs, who actually get the facts and within fraction of a second write the story instead of the human journalist. So this is the, the second uh, part of the puzzle, which really today uh, there are stories uh, written in Forbes and in, in other uh, news magazines that are untouched by human, human journalists. We have in very, very quickly, once there is an event or facts, new facts are being found, uh, the program, the artificial program writes the story and the, the name of the journalist is really the name of a robot. There's a company called Narrative Science in Illinois, who actually already doing it and uh, collect quite a lot of money uh, for their as investors. So is this a new phenomenon or has this been around for a while? Didn't your research at MIT in the 1970s actually predict some of this? No, I, in my research predicted the use, the use of touch screens, uh, which were later used by Steve Jobs. And I did the first really studies on interactive television where we studied how uh, uh, providing people in the television uh, studio, providing them with devices similar to what today you can use the, the touch phones, and they provide feedback. And I studied how allowing publics to, to feedback during, to provide feedback during a discussion, how it affected the, the group dynamics and the discussion dynamics. Uh, we did not predict at the time robot journalism at all. Actually, data mining is quite, quite, uh, it, it has developed in the past uh, 20 years. So how, how pervasive is robot journalism? It's still, it's still in the initial stages uh, because the, the programs are really started in 2010. But they're, they're doing very quick penetration. And because the robot journalist has some real advantages. First of all, he never forgets facts. He can do research very quickly. He never asks for a day off. And he can write a story within, within seconds so that the, event, that the facts have been discovered. Uh, so they don't miss and, deadlines. And, and if you write the program correctly, he doesn't, he's not even biased. As you know, most journalists uh, uh, are biased about, about the stories. But the robot journalist, if he program correctly, can be completely unbiased. So he never forgets anything. Uh, for example, there was an earthquake in California, and a robot journalist uh, wrote the story when the name of the journalist that appeared on the story was already asleep. Los Angeles Times, by the way, is using this kind of uh, robotic story writers for quite a while. How, how fast is it growing, and what are the factors driving the growth? This is, this is a good question. <laughs> the, 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 echo, the ecosystem, which really promotes this, uh, this uh, robotic journalism is, of course, the, uh, the new, the multimedia uh, uh, type of, uh, the, the development of multimedia, multi-platforms, the, the slow disappearance of the print. It's really basically a question of costs. You know that advertising money today shifts towards, uh, from the print media to the, to the internet. And because the, the, the robotic journalists are very, very uh, cheap, very efficient, very quick, and because of the economics considerations, I, I trust that the robotic journalism will grow very fast. You know, there's a, next, next month, there's a big convention, uh, a journalist convention in the city of Elat in Israel. About 2,000 journalists uh, come down to Elat, and I wrote a story it's a feature story for this convention about robot journalism. 
And the editor of the booklet that is, that is printing for this convention wrote me, you know, Norm, this is great because now the journalists <laughs> will have to start working when they will see the threat uh, of these robotic journalists that they can really uh, analyze facts very quickly and write the story very quickly. It will force them into becoming innovative, to do more in-depth thinking, more in-depth research. So the, the optimists view this entry of robotic journalism as a new era where, where really good journalists will not disappear, but they will be forced to really think again how they can be innovative, how can they be more in-depth uh, analysis. So it depends how, how you see the cup, how full or how empty. Uh, I think it will improve uh, the threat of robotic journalism. It will be there. I, I guarantee that in any newspaper, electronic newspaper or print newspaper that you will purchase in the coming years, uh, a major part of the stories will be written by robotic journalists. But still, people will seek a human journalist because they always have, hopefully, they will have this added, added value, added innovation, added perspective. So I, don't, I see it as a positive force in improving future journalism. So since you mentioned costs, uh, I wonder what sort of a sort of business model uh, can be... Uh, put around this kind of journalism? Well, you know, that uh, I wrote in the paper, and it's a good question because I foresee the new, the new leaders of the newsrooms will not be the experienced journalists with a pipe, but will be the, the, uh, the computer engineers. And just the other day, on October 17th, uh, Salzburger, Salzburger, I hope I say it correctly, the, the publisher of New York Times was asked with hindsight what, what you, you have done in light of this digital development in media, and he said, I would hire more engineers. Mm -hmm. So I do see a uh, tr tremendous saving in costs in, in future newsrooms that are going to be fully automatic, uh, but and the, really the leaders will be those uh, uh, journalist geeks who will understand in media and will know how to use data mining and will know how to add value to what the robot journalists can do. But it's going to be very efficient. And another, another aspect of it, today we are going into in targeted advertising. So the robot journalist will be able not only to write a story, but it will be able to immediately send it to Mokul if he knows that Mokul is interested in certain type of information. So we, we have here a complete automation of news gathering, news analysis, news writing, uh, st story writing, and targeting of, of uh, the information. Uh, that's fascinating. Uh, to what extent do social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn factor into this phenomenon? Well, the social media, social networks uh, help spread the word. Uh, of the, all these new developments. Today, you know, with, especially with Twitter, uh, once there are good, efficient robotic journalists in operation, the, these social networks will spread the word very, very quickly. So it will expedite the development of these processes. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis Facebook, I think uh, I'm a more pessimist about Facebook because I think uh, it will probably, if, if it will not change uh, the way it is today, it will probably disappear in, fair, in favor of the Twittering, the Twitter kind of systems, which also developed into the video. Uh, today, I, I, I think I'm, a, I'm on Facebook. I haven't looked at my Facebook uh, page, I think, for the past two weeks, mm -hmm. because it's always loaded with information, loaded with dogs and friends, and everybody's happy traveling all over Europe and all over America, and I'm the only one who's working. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, the present, the present uh, structure of Facebook uh, will have to change, but Twitter is in the right direction, quick, to the point, uh, so uh, social networks will spread the word of, of robotic journalism very quickly. How much uh, of robot journalism do you see in Israel today, the Israeli media? Not much, because the, the writing of the, the software the, to, to write the stories and to do the data mining is quite an expensive. Israel is more is in the direction of developing startups which uh, point the direction to, to this new new uh, software 
uh, new, new new artificial intelligence uh, techniques. But then this the startups are being sold to American companies or European. So Israel is in more in developing the the seed of these innovations, but to make it into a large scale. Uh, so far, Israel has not been very successful uh, in taking small ideas and really making them large scale. So the media, the media, and the media in Israel is a very, very sad, sad situation. It's controlled by the government, controlled by politics, by by uh, by uh, uh, rich people, by capital. Uh, the Israeli media today is uh, nothing to to write home about. It's quite sad. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to ask two or three questions wearing the hat of a human journalist. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll try, I'll try to answer as a human, <laughs> as a human professor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I think a lot of successful journalists share is I think they have three qualities. The first is they have uh, relentless curiosity. Uh, the second is they have an innate skepticism, especially about PR. And the third is that they have the ability to tell stories simply and clearly in a way that it can be understood by a large number of people. Do you think these are functions that can be automated? It's sorry to say, but yes. <laughs> All right. So a curiosity, a word. Uh, the first one was innate skepticism. Mm -hmm. Curiosity, uh, skepticism, and storytelling. Curiosity, uh, data mining, and, and software which d does data mining on huge data silos uh, is the, really the ultimate expression of curiosity. <laughs> You know, in, in my article, I tell about this young lady uh, from Israel who's declared by the MIT Technology Review as a, the, one of the future scientists who discovered that if in a rural area, in a poor area, if you have one year, you have drought, uh, to be followed the following year with a flood, then the third year probably there will be a, an, an outbreak of cholera, okay? A journalist with a high curiosity, and she accomplished that by looking over a huge amount of data. A human journalist cannot cannot have this ability to scan over huge amounts of, of, of data. But it was a human researcher who made those connections. Uh, she wrote the program. Now, this program can go to other data silos and discover other things. I think, I, I said before, I don't see the, the best human journalists disappear. But the robots journalists will force people uh, like you, Mokul, to be on their toes and to be more curious and to do more. Skepticism is one value which uh, it can be translated to st statistics. And even a good program can be skeptic about the results and study it. But I see, I, don't, I go back to what I said before, I don't see good journalists disappear. But I see good journalists doing a better job in, in, in line of what you have described, a skepticism, curiosity. Uh, I, see it, I see fewer journalists, but better ones in light of robotic journalism. And this is what wrote me, the guy who, who wrote, the, who is the publisher of the booklet for the conference, he said, Noam, I'm glad you wrote this article. It will force journalists to start becoming alive again. You, Bokul, uh, I'm sorry to say, represent a minority of journalists who write today. Journalists today, most journalists, and I'm saying it as a dean of School of Communication, most journalists are quite lazy. You have to provide them with a story, you have to provide them with information, and they, they publish it under their name, and they, they don't even go out to do investigative journalism. Investigative journalism is risky, it's costly, it's dangerous, and fewer and fewer people are doing it. Robotic journalism, will, uh, robotic journalism, I hope, will bring this to life again. Right. The, the uh, other one quality, and this is more for editors than for reporters, uh, is, the, is that editors exercise editorial judgment. Uh, and I wonder how robot journalists 
fit into that category also. Well, you know, Google News. Google News were the first in, I think, 2002, uh, have developed this uh, Google News that crawled today over 27,000 news sources. And they say they, they, have pro they wrote a program uh, how to exercise judgment. They take an event, for example, and they can study what is the, the probability of this event occurring. They, they bring, they take the criteria that ed good editors are exercising and they put it into the programs. The, it's like a good chess player. The, a good chess program will never study, uh, will never improve itself by, by, by uh, gaming against a weak, a weak partner. So what the, the people who write these programs go to the best editors, they, they follow their best practices, and they interview them, and they, they try to write the program to ask the same questions that a good editor would ask. Right. So, so in conclusion, uh, let's end with the question that we asked at the beginning. Uh, can robot journalists replace human journalists? I, what the answer I'm getting from you is, <laughs> Yes, but not completely. Yes, but not completely, but uh, there is one pessimistic angle to this. Robotic journalism, from point of view of an economics, is very efficient. And a very good journalist could be quite, quite expensive. And I fear that economic considerations among, in the news media uh, board of directors could force more and more the media organization to go into robotics because of the cost advantages. Uh, as a human being, I, I hope uh, that at least a certain portion of every media in the future will be run by, by high-quality journalists that will, uh, will make sure that the human journalist is always better than the robot journalist. But it, it's a hope. <laughs> well, maybe someday uh, both human journalists and human professors uh, will become better, and robot journalists and robot professors will do the work that humans don't want to do. Noam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Mokul. Thank you very much, and I hope you continue with your good journalistic work. Thank you. The human journalistic work. Thank you. Thank you.